Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. Our broadcast today comes from our most recent MetaStrategy Digital Symposium. The topic was creating innovative, sustainable business models, and the panelists who spoke about it were Frank Casulo, the Chief Digital Officer of Chevron, and Bhavani Amirthalingam, the Chief Digital Information Officer of Ameren. The gentleman who led the conversation was MetaStrategy partner and West Coast lead, Chris Davis, who joins me now. Chris, welcome. Thanks, Peter. It's great to be here. Well, Chris, uh, I mentioned the topic, creating innovative, sustainable business models, certainly something that is uh, rapidly growing in the mind of a lot of dig digital executives right now with ESG, for example, being a topic that is gaining tremendous momentum. Uh, but talk a bit about your own perspective on the topic and why Frank and Bhavani were well positioned to speak about it. Well, we want to have Frank and Bhavani join us for this discussion because both at Chevron and Ameren, they have unique perspectives of the role that digital data and technology can play on shaping their companies, but also their industries. If you think about oil and gas all the way through the delivery of electricity at a home or a business, there's a massive opportunity to leverage sensors to understand utilization, to expand into adjacencies such as at Chevron where they're using their current reservoir capabilities to look at how they play in the carbon cap and trade space. When you think about shaping behavior, but also dealing with volatility, both executives have a unique perspective on how they can drive sustainability economically and environmentally for their companies. And this conversation was well-timed. It came right on the heels of myself living in California, dealing with a bit of energy fluctuation on the power grid. And so I was really keen to get their insights on how they were going to shape the direction of the energy industry economically and environmentally in a sustainable way. I'm sure the audience will enjoy. Thanks. Well, thank you, Chris. Let's get to that discussion. As I mentioned, the topic is creating innovative, sustainable business models featuring Frank Casulo of Chevron and Bhavani Murthalingam of Ameren with MetaStrategy Zone, Chris Davis. I'm really excited about the, the panel this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, Peter asked me what I wanted for my birthday today. And I said, I wanna talk about innovation in the energy sector. And so I'm joined uh, by two great executives, uh, Frank and uh, Bhavani. And the, the topic today uh, is really interesting and, and it's time bound. I live in Northern California. Earlier this week, we're experiencing uh, record heat waves and energy is, is absolutely on my mind. What's so interesting about the energy sector is it's in a constant state of innovation. So these two organizations are always looking for new ways to unlock how would they drive economic and environmental sustainability? And so during this panel, what we're going to unpack a little bit is what does that really mean for these organizations? What are some practical things that they're doing? And how do we uh, take lessons away for our own organizations? So uh, Frank and Bhavani, welcome. Hi, Chris, it's great to be here. And we're so glad we can make your birthday wishes come true today with the panel. Excellent, thank you. Frank, Chevron doesn't need a lot of introduction, but it's an over $200 billion global energy organization. And prior to taking the chief digital officer role, you held a number of business leadership roles, most recently as the president of the business in Canada. And, and I'm curious, you know, we talk about sustainability, economic and environmental sustainability. And, I'm, and I'd like to invite you to define what that means for Chevron. How, how do you think about sustainability on those two axes? Great, thanks for the opening question, Chris. Um, we think about sustainability, we think about our, our core strategic objectives, um, higher returns, lower carbon, and delivering it safely. And if we double click into lower carbon, it really forms two different pieces. Um, our current business today, how do we lower the carbon intensity of our current business today? And then how do we prepare for the energy transition? So we think about analytics, we think about data and technology as instrumental in lowering the carbon intensity of our base business. Then as we look forward, we're thinking about where do we have competitive advantages to help the energy transition ecosystem advance? And we think about the hydrogen economy and the value chains associated with that. We think about the ability to capture carbon and store it. We think about how we're gonna play in terms of carbon markets going forward and how do we advance emerging energies in a way that we can help advance the system. We have true competitive advantages in each and every one of these areas. And at the heart of it, at the heart of both lowering the intensity of our current base and the future energy system is technology. And we believe the intersection of technology and the energy transition is really defining the rate at which we advance. 
And so that's really exciting to be in this space, to think about the digital applications, to think about the technology and think about wholly enabling the business strategies to succeed. So this is very near and dear to our company in terms of how we advance and the rate at which we advance. Yeah, and Bhavani, I wanna you know, ask a similar question for you. Ameren is, is a $6 billion utility covering Illinois and Missouri. And what I found so interesting as I learned more about the organization is just how diversified your sources of, of uh, production are, both production and then obviously having to deal with transmission to your millions of customers that, that you service. And so as you think about for the role of utility, you know, I, again, I, I talked about my own personal experiences uh, th this week, very, in fact, um, what does sustainability mean both economically and environmentally? And how is Amron thinking about charting the future you know, through the use of technology? Thank you, Chris. And I think you set it up really well with your own experience here right now in uh, San Francisco. So, you know, I think when uh, when we think about our role from uh, an Amron perspective, you know, think about it, there's, there's two aspects to it. When you think about sustainability, you think about sustainably delivering, you know, generating and delivering power to our customers. Uh, we think about it in the context of the grid, which is really around how we generate transmit and distribute energy, you know, uh, electric and gas to our customers. And so really, as you indicated, you know, we've got a variety of, uh, you know, sources in our footprint today. And, you know, we continue to move towards a, you know, cleaner, more sustainable uh, energy footprint across, across our service territory, keeping in mind some very important aspects that you actually you know, subtly hinted on, right? One that is reliable, you know, reliability is extremely important. You know, we take um, your power for granted till you don't have it. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I think reliability is extremely important. Uh, affordability is extremely important, you know? So really making sure that we're doing this transition in a reliable, affordable way, um, you know, is very important from a sustainability standpoint. So when we think about our customers and what we're doing on the grid, that's a key aspect of it. And then the second piece is, you know, really, and you think about, you know, driving that clean energy transition, sustainability for our customers at the edge in terms of, you know, how they consume their energy, you know, really leveraging data, you know, to, for them to be able to understand how they're using their energy to have more choice, to have more control, you know, at the edge, uh, time of use rates, you know, as you think about electrification, energy efficiency, you know, whether it's residential customers or commercial industrial customers, there's such an important demand response programs that allow them to manage their energy consumption very effectively. I think so those are, so kind of the two pieces to the equation, it's how we generate, transfer and distribute and how we do that in an, in an affordable, you know, a sustainable and reliable manner for our customers, really, and, and really leveraging, you know, uh, data to drive that visibility and drive programs that are meaningful for our customers and how they manage their energy usage. So that's kind of at the highest level how we think about it. Um, when you talk about really how we enable that transition, your technology is so embedded. Frank did a nice job touching on some of the power technology and the evolution and what's happening there. And you think about digital technology and how it goes hand in hand, you know, uh, when you look at all of our, uh, you know, generation and transmission and distribution footprint and think of transformers, you think of wind turbines, really we manage billions of dollars of assets on the grid, you know, uh, for our customers and making sure asset performance, right? So again, leveraging data analytics, advanced analytics, AI, machine learning to manage asset health and asset performance, such an important aspect of what we do because it drives reliability. You know, you can predict and prevent failures. Uh, it drives affordability because you get better as asset performance. And so, you know, how you're just having more efficient operations as a result. So there is the whole aspect of how we manage our, you know, significant footprint um, of assets and how we do that very, you know, efficiently and effectively and leverage data and technology for that. And then, you know, I kind of touched on some of the customer aspects, which is really, again, leveraging data, um, and empowering the customer with the digital tools so they understand, you know, this is how I'm consuming. 
you know, with smart meters deployed in our footprint, really disaggregating that data and giving them the ability to understand, here's how I'm consuming it, here's how I can actually, you know, change some of my uh, behaviors that helps me manage my energy bill better, you know. So I think it really is driving those right, right demand response programs, right products and services, you know, for our customers using data. Yeah, I think what's so interesting about the energy sector is, on the one hand, there's day-to-day -day volatility. You know, the, the price of oil uh, a couple months ago versus filling up my tank at a Chevron this weekend, uh, electricity uh, is very similar um, in that same vein. So there's this in-the-moment volatility, yet the projects that you have to undertake in order to plan for the future are years or decades in the making. And, and so there's this healthy tension of, near-termism and long-termism that, that has to play. And, and I think you hit on it, Bhavani, of this intelligence of giving consumers or people at the edge the ability to understand utilization so that you can start to adjust to that volatility. But also operationally, uh, these are businesses run on margins. When the price dips, our margins get pinched. And so we have to be able to, to run our operations effectively. And Frank, um, you've, you've shared the idea with me of, of really how Chevron is using sensors, not necessarily in spending uh, a lot of money on individual things, but, but a really creative approach that has, I would say, almost an outsized ROI. And I want to invite you to, to talk about how Chevron's using this notion of industrial IoT and, and really telemetry at the edge in order to improve the way that, it, that you're running the business. That's great, Chris. Thanks for the question. I have to go back and share the synergy on this panel with Bhavani's comments. I mean, our mission is to provide safe, reliable, affordable, ever cleaner energy. And as you know, our products are instrumental in driving the power grids, driving the utilities around the world. Um, we're LNG suppliers, we're natural gas suppliers uh, in today's environment. And, and you think about our mission to meet today's energy needs and the future energy needs, and there's a real synergy uh, with, with how Bhavani described it. So we really think about, you know, enabling human progress and advancing the energy system in the same way. Um, hey, to your question, I, I love the technology question. Thanks to the lead in on sensors. Uh, we're a highly censored uh, organization. Think about our manufacturing facilities, our producing facilities, very complex, large facilities. Uh, and that technology is evolving fast and it really opens up a whole new realm of data, data analytics and real-time monitoring. But one thing I was excited about is, is really looking at sens sensors on the edge. And I'm a mechanical engineer. I actually started in the power industry and used to think about vibration monitoring as a key element of how the plant was performing, the reliability, the condition of the plants. So think about today, we're, we're challenging ourselves to think about how do we get a sensor, we call it a golden sensor, that's under $100 that can be easily deployed. So you think about large manufacturing facilities and think about five to 10,000 sensors. And then think about what that real time data would mean to the improvement of the efficiency, reliability and safety of that operations. Just as a mechanical engineer, I get excited, but also it opens up a whole new realm in terms of technology and data analytics. I think can really transform how we operate in our company. So thanks for the opportunity to share that. Just one, one example. Yeah, I love, I mean, whether it's in a manufacturing facility or, or on a wind turbine, just the, these, uh, on the one hand, small instruments have this outsized impact and monitoring vibration to understand where the efficiency is, whether you're distributing or capturing energy. Um, uh, these small uh, um, localized opportunities have this outsized impact when you connect them and look at it in aggregate. And I think a lot of people talk about AI and ML and it suddenly becomes the science project. And I think a lot of what's so interesting in the energy space is that it's actually being put to use. It's, it's real technology that's being put to use to make decisions, lower cost, improve reliability, improve safety and outcomes for, for end consumers. And, and I just find that so fascinating. And, and Bhavani, you know, the, the question that will apply to both for, for Ameren and for Chevron, but with new sources of energy come new opportunities to unlock business models. And you previously were at, at Schneider, uh, where you were helping the organization build products that, that electrify the grid. <laughs> now you're on the other side, helping run a utility uh, that provides uh, energy to the end consumer. And, and I'm curious, how have you started to rethink the business model, how you generate revenue, how you uh, increase margin through this realm, whether it's with solar, um, whether it's with wind, what are some of the ways that technology is actually making an impact beyond the operational, but unlocking new revenue streams? 
Yeah, absolutely. Chris, I mean, you know, I think you know, we are very tight and lockstep with our customers, right? So you think about just uh, all of the, you know, I think about energy efficiency, electrification opportunities in our, you know, whether it's residential or commercial industrial customers. And as they are making that transition, really being there alongside for them, you know, it is, is a key part of the journey for us. So it's really, again, technology plays an extremely important role there, um, you know, from an enablement standpoint. So we think about it, I'd say probably a few lenses, one that, you know, the second piece is again, uh, you know, I, I, I know it sounds uh, like a broken record when I bring back the doing this in a, you know, you know, I loved your first question, which was, how do you think about sustainability, both, you know, from an environmental standpoint, as well as from an economic standpoint. So I think, Really, as we look at driving that clean energy transition, you know, to the, the, across our footprint, looking at that and doing it in a fashion where it, the reliability is not lost is so so important, right? Especially as you think of, you know, electrification, right, as a as a way of continued growth in usage, right, and making sure. So it's like this whole cycle of you've got electrification happening on one hand, all the more important now that that you've got reliable power so you can actually have the energy you need to go drive your cars, right? And so I think you think about, you know, electric uh, vehicles, for instance. And so I think it's really important that as you continue to drive electrification, reliability becomes extremely important, right? right. So, uh, you know, even when you think about the growth, um, as there's economic growth in our region, as we have, you know, uh, businesses coming online, really helping them flourish, making sure, you know, we are there partnering hand in hand with them, you know, is extremely important for us. So, you know, when we think about, uh, you know, growth and like, look at this whole transition, that's a big investment for us. You think about wind, solar, the transition to that batteries, you know, making all of that happen, right? As if you think about just the, uh, making it meaningful for our customers, making it meaningful for all our stakeholders, that becomes a really important aspect of right. it. Right, right. No, absolutely. And, you know, I think, Frank, returning to, to sort of the motto that you you highlighted around higher returns, lower carbon, safely and reliably, uh, I mean, you might think that a, a historical oil and gas company will lower carbon, that, that will, by definition, mean lower returns, but but you're really, the, the company is really challenging itself, whether it's the acquisition of the Renewals Energy Group, uh, Go Ames, Iowa, uh, or it's uh, it's looking at some of the, the new opportunities around reservoirs and carbon cap and trade. And I'm just curious, you're, you were in the business, now you're the chief digital officer, and there, there's, again, there's this healthy tension between revenue and, and sustainability. There's also this healthy tension of existing businesses and new businesses. And so as the as the chief digital officer, how do you strike that balance and where do you think technology is going to add the most value in, in unlocking new new lines of business? That's a great question, Chris. And, and building on your comment of a historical company, you know, we've been in business for 140 years and the energy system's been transitioning that entire time. Yeah. Bonnie touched on it. So this is not new to our company or Chevron, but we're very excited about what we're undertaking. Um, last year, we, we launched Chevron New Energies, which is a segment in our business uh, that's focused on advancing capabilities to build out new businesses. Um, we look at where we have competitive advantages in technology and capability. I work in the technical center, and we're driven to enable these strategies through a tremendous amount of technical expertise and knowledge that we have. Um, so we think about you're, you're based in California, as I am, and, and you think about the hydrogen uh, economy and, and what's happening with those value chains. Well, Today, we're producing hydrogen, California. We have branded station in Napa that we're opening up and we're building that, that cap capacity to build out a real business segment. Um, you think about renewable fuels. Uh, we have a credible amount of technology. You mentioned REG Group to help really transform that space. And we look at, as we do digital, it's a business-led construct. We look at our new energies and our transition as a business-led model. Um, so we feel between hydrogen, renewable energies, sustainable aviation fuel, um, and the ability to capture carbon. We have tremendous amount of expertise in terms of reservoirs and, and injectivity and technical areas that are really advanced um, that we can we have competitive advantages and we think we'll be able to accelerate the energy transition through the work that we do. Um, so for us, it's an exciting time. We're seeing real progress being made 
and, and really excited about what's possible in this space. And I like your opening, just like digital, it's business driven. It's about assuring ourselves that we're sustainable for the long term, uh, both in terms of the lower carbon and higher returns. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And for both of your companies, this is a, a shareholder mandate to have a clear ESG strategy. This is coming from the board and your investors. There's ETFs uh, that are focused on this. Like this is very clear for your organization. But for executives that are in the digital space that aren't in the energy sector, um, Bhavani, I want to start with you. What are some of the practical steps that they should be thinking about charting the course for, for their companies? ESG strategy, if they're a retailer or they're a manufacturer or they're in the professional services space, some of the, uh, the conversations, healthcare and legal that we just had on the previous panel. Yeah, you know, I think Frank touched on something really important. I'll reiterate, and that starts with the data. So, you know, I think there are opportunities across, you know, I came, obviously I came from the uh, OEM, is in the energy space, but, you know, from the OEM side and that I've spent a number of years in the tech industry prior to that, that's a huge consumption, you know, huge consumer of energy, right? And so I think really they, the different roles and hats that you can wear is you think about consumption, you know, with your data center footprint, think about, you know, uh, consumption with key suppliers and partners, right? And key part of it is understanding what the baseline is, understanding the data you know, tracking and then helping the partnering with different parts of the organization, you know, it's no different than other key aspects that you, you know, as a digital organization, you end up really working hand in hand with the rest of the businesses to figure out how you enable, you know, what they're going after through digital technology and sustainability is no different from that standpoint. Like you said, in our cases in the energy sector, you know, it's been a priority for, for a long time. And so, we'll, you know, we're all collectively, we've been thinking about it for a long time. So we might be in a different place, but I think starting there is really important. Just understanding the data, understanding where they are and just more efficient ways of how you consume energy. You know, I think in, and then how is technology actually enabling those aspects of it, right? I think just working hand in hand is uh, a number of, you know, I think about building efficiencies, energy efficiencies around that. And there's, again, a lot of digital technology that can be deployed to enable that. A lot of uh, assets, you know, if you think of manufacturing companies, uh, you know, a lot of what used to be traditional operational technology is all, you know, ITOT or, you know, IOT, sensor enabled, connected, which again comes back to data, you know, that you're able to then drive insights, drive more efficiency, you know, in how you consume energy. So I think just thinking about it in those different aspects, right, as the, what we might have just always thought of as mechanical in the past really is, is you know, going from just being purely mechanical to being connected. And Correct. that's, you know, the digital play. All, everyone on this call can play it definitely yeah. if you go on. Yeah, and, and Frank, I want to, you know, pose the same question, but also add, add a wrinkle to it in that, you know, what's so unique about Chevron it's, is its vastness of its global footprint. And you've had tours across different parts of, of the world as, as part of your ascension uh, through the organization. And obviously in the U.S., we have certain regulations that drive expectations. And so companies can say, okay, well, I'll meet the bare minimum. But for a global organization that the standards are not necessarily the same uh, political region by political region, uh, how should digital leaders be thinking about driving for a global company an ESG strategy that, that scales in, in an environment where all things might not, not be equal? That's a great question, Chris. And, and if I think about it, I'll make a parallel to safety. Um, wherever we operate in the world, we hold ourselves to the same standards. Uh, it's, a, it's a company core value. Um, and the same thing when it comes to how we operate from a carbon intensity perspective. Um, and it's interesting in many places around the world where we operate, we partner with governments. We partner with other industries to think about how we can affect the societal change, the expectations. There's a common unified mission around the globe. It's just that there's different approaches that are being taken uh, so we're sought out as a partner of choice when it comes to thinking about responsible development, oil and gas projects, and when we think about the evolution of the energy transition system. Um, so it's engaging in dialogue. As you mentioned, I have the opportunity in Canada. 
I helped lead uh, the development of the climate strategy and policy work for our association. So that's one way you can participate, bringing really all the capabilities, insights of Chevron to that forum. Um, we work in areas in Kazakhstan where we really unify and work with the government very, very closely to think about how we advance uh, an energy ecosystem that's lower carbon, lower intensity. Um, so yeah, you, you might see the intensity where we live in California is a very different level of intensity than other parts of the world, but it doesn't change their approach that we take to our business. And sometimes we have a really outsized influence or impact where we work uh, globally in terms of helping advance, as we mentioned, a safe work environment, but also one that's lower carbon and sustainable. So uh, great question. I have to build on Bhavani's question around data. It's so exciting in this new space. And I think the sustainability, you asked a question. I mean, having absolute clarity on your goals and objectives and knowing your roles and responsibilities. But last week we, we shared, we put in production the first LNG carbon footprinting tool. We think it's the first of kind, at least when we started the initiative, I think there's more to follow. This is an example of the capabilities that digital needs to be thinking about to be able to enable this ecosystem to exist. And it's all about data and Bhavani mentioned it. When we think about GHG emissions tracking and reporting, we think about sustainability control towers. Those are all data feeds that help us advance our ecosystems. So the LNG carbon footprint is kind of neat because you're delivering a cargo of LNG and you're delivering the carbon intensity report and you're aligning with the customer on how you do that. So that's the exciting intersection of digital and technology. It can be transformative or it can be incremental. And I think we play a part in every aspect of that. Yeah, I, I love that, that the uh, the bill of materials is not just the, the good in the shipment, but it's also the report. And then that that data starts to go throughout the life cycle, whether it's you know delivering a shipment of, of LNG in, in a cargo or it's delivering that to the end consumer at their home through a smart meter. And I think what's so exciting about both your organizations is you're helping uh, deliver critical infrastructure to, to people, but also helping chart the course for the future. So uh, Frank and Bhavani, thank you so much. This was a, a really rich conversation. Uh, I'm super excited and, and optimistic, frankly, about what, what has in store um, for the future of, of energy through digital and technology leaders like yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Bhavani. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Good to see you, Frank. Nice. Likewise.